Hello, this video is about the AQI, the Air Quality Index, and we're going to talk about what it is and how it works, and also why it's not 100% perfect, nor a 100% accurate indicator of our individual daily air quality experiences. The AQI is the EPA's, that's Environmental Protection Agency's, index for reporting air quality. The EPA established an AQI for five major air pollutants regulated by the Clean Air Act. Each of these pollutants has a national air quality standard set by the EPA to protect the public's health. They are ground level ozone, particle pollution, also known as particulate matter, including PM 2.5 and PM 10, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide. The AQI values range from zero to 500. And the higher the AQI value, the worse the air quality is. AQI values at or below 100 are generally thought of as satisfactory. When AQI values are above 100, the air quality is considered unhealthy, at first for certain sensitive groups of people, and then for everyone as the AQI values get higher. The AQI is divided into six categories. Each category corresponds to a different level of health concern. Each category also has a specific color. The color makes it easy for people to quickly determine whether the air quality is reaching unhealthy levels in their region. Green is good and the values are 0 to 50. Yellow is moderate and the values are 51 to 100. And then it moves on to orange and red, purple and maroon. The Clean Air Act of 1990 requires the EPA to review its national ambient air quality standards every five years to reflect evolving health effects information. PM 2.5 stands for particulates that are 2.5 microns or less in diameter. The PM 2.5 standards were lowered in 2012 and will also be lowered again towards the end of this year, 2023 as well. So we need to realize that some of what was considered good air quality 10 to 25 years ago is not considered good air quality today. The standardizations are becoming more stringent over time as research is proving more severe health issues associated with poor air quality. And we can expect that some of the air quality that is deemed to be good today will not be considered good air quality in the future either. Some countries also have their own AQI ratings. Different countries will have different air quality standards and therefore different AQIs. Australia's system is called the AQI. Canada has something called the AQHI, which is the Air Quality Health Index. China has the IAQI, which is the Individual Air Quality Index. Europe has the CAQI, which is the Common Air Quality Index created in 2012. And in 2017, they added the EAQI, European Air Quality Index, as well. India, in 2014, created the NAQI, which is the National Air Quality Index, and so on. So again, the air quality standardizations in each country are different from each other. Now, if you want to check the air quality in your area, you can go to the airnow.gov website. You can just type in your zip code and it gets updated hourly. Here's Georgia. I just put in my zip code and it provides me with my local AQI. Right now, it says my air quality is good with a 39 score. And you can see here, it gives a prediction for tomorrow's air quality as well, but it's currently not available for me. And here's something pretty cool. If you click on this button here that says monitors near me, and you can find the actual air quality monitors closest to your residence. So there are about 5,000 active air quality monitors all over the United States, which the EPA utilizes to come up with the AQI readings. These individual monitors cost over $20,000 each, and they are constantly being checked and maintained by trained staff. So here is my local interactive map of air quality. And you can come over here and click on PM 2.5, and it will show the locations of the actual monitors, which are testing for the PM 2.5 levels near your residence. Again, the PM 2.5 means particulate matter 2.5 microns in size and smaller. And the smaller particles are generally considered more hazardous to us. So here is a map of the area where I live, and I can see the closest EPA air monitor is over 10 miles from my home. And the two closest monitors to me are 25 miles apart from each other. This one here and this one here. So based on this information, there are two important things for us to consider. Number one, accuracy. In particular, how accurate are the PM 2.5 readings from a monitor that is 10 miles away from my home? 
Also, how accurate are the other readings as well? When one of my neighbors burns their leaves, the monitor 10 miles away from me is not going to pick this up, right? Nor will it know if a school bus or truck is sitting outside in front of my home running continuously for 10 minutes. Is the monitor or monitoring system going to take these local isolated sources of air pollution into consideration when it's showing me the AQI for my area? No, of course not. So I think we have to realize that AQI is only a general tool to consider when we think about our own individualized outdoor air quality. If our local AQI tells us our air quality is very good, but we have a neighbor burning leaves 500 feet from our front door, then our individualized air quality at our specific location is definitely not good for smoke particulates at that point in time, right? Also, if you're in your car sitting in traffic, you probably have a lot of carbon dioxide and other fumes in the air around you. So there are definitely some additional variables for us to consider when we see a good AQI rating for our area and then decide to open every window in our house to bring in fresh air. It's not that simple. The most important factors that affect our air quality are the ones occurring this moment at our immediate location. So I don't think any sensor that is 10 miles away can always be accurate about the PM 2.5 levels outside the windows of my home, right? I mean, that's just my opinion. Number two, outdoor air seeps indoors. The average person in the U.S. breathes indoor air 93% of the time because we spend 87% of our time indoors and 6% of our time in vehicles, according to a study in the Journal of Exposure Science and Environmental Epidemiology. Since most Americans spend the vast majority of their time indoors, most people may be inclined to think that the AQI and outdoor air pollution issue is of minimal concern to them, regardless of how poor it gets, because on average, they're indoors 93% of the time, breathing indoor air 93% of the time. And on the surface, this would seem to make sense. However, Professor Joseph Allen, the director of the Harvard Healthy Buildings Program, says the outdoor air actually penetrates inside our indoor environments. And since we spend over 90% of our time inside, the majority of our exposure to outdoor air actually occurs indoors. Most of the outdoor air quality we will breathe will actually occur indoors. The amount of toxins in the air outdoors, our intake of those toxins is three to 10 times more indoors because we stay indoors much more. Therefore, we are not really 100% totally escaping the wrath and negative effects of outdoor air pollution when we spend most of our time indoors. We just get exposed to smaller doses over longer periods of time. So yes, that bad outdoor air quality does in fact negatively affect us indoors as well. So these are just a few things I think people should consider when they look at the AQI numbers. It is not a perfect system, but is definitely helping doctors and scientists learn more about how air pollution affects our overall health. Click on this video here to learn about the different types of HEPA filters and standardizations. People need to understand that not all HEPA is the same. Thank you.